In today's video, I will show you a really nice and simple fluorescent tube drive circuit. Now the circuit uses 12 volts DC to light up a 20 watt fluorescent tube. Now in my case, I'm using a 13 watt compact fluorescent light like you see here. I also tested the circuit using a 20 watt fluorescent tube. So I can tell you with absolute certainty that the circuit that's posted online, which I will post a link to in the video description area, definitely works. Now here's the schematic. It consists of two transistors. You have your TIP 3055. I used an MJE 3055. That's an NPN. You also have a BC338. You can use an NTE 123AP or you can use what I did, a 2N4401. All of them work fine. Now the circuit does have a brightness adjustment for the fluorescent tube or tubes and that uses a 100K potentiometer and that adjusts how much current flows into the base of this transistor. I changed the 100N or the 0.1 microfarad capacitor to a 224 capacitor or a 0.22 microfarad. This was a 180 ohm. I used a 200 ohm half watt and the 100 microfarad capacitor, I used a 1000 microfarad electrolytic across the power rails. Now the most difficult part of the circuit, and it's really actually pretty easy, is to make the transformer. To make the transformer is very simple. Let me just get a better angle with the camera here. Right here is the transformer. This transformer here I removed from an old AM FM radio. You're going to want to look for a ferrite rod. It could be a round rod. It could be a bar shaped rod. Some of the old AM antennas have a bar shaped rod that's flat. You can wind it on that as well. It will work. And you may also be able to use a ferrite snap core for a transformer if you wanted to use that as well. The way I wound this, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to wrap some clear tape over the entire rod. Once you wrap the entire rod with the clear tape, then starting on one end, you're going to wind approximately 58 turns of 23 gauge wire, go from end to end. Once you wind that on, take some more clear tape and cover that entire winding up. Once you cover that winding up, you're going to take some 30 gauge wire start at one end, wind it to the other, just space it out nice and neat across the coil, and then you're going to wrap more clear tape over that entire feedback winding. Once everything is covered in tape, then you could do the high voltage winding. But just to let you know, it's a good idea to keep everything wound in the same direction. Now that this is covered in tape, the 13 turn winding for the feedback, you can start winding your high voltage winding using the 30 gauge wire. Wind it nice and neat and nice and tight. Start at one end, go all the way to this spot. Once you get to the spot here, cover that entire 30 gauge high voltage winding with some tape, and then you're going to wind back. And you're going to have to keep track of how many turns. So you may have done 50 that way. 50 back is 100. Once you get to there, cover this with tape again. Carry on with your 50. Keep doing it until you have the full 450 turns. The purpose of all the layers of tape is to provide better insulation for the high voltage winding. You also would like to have the high voltage lead come out on this end and then the other one come out on the other end. This way they're far apart. Also make sure they're nowhere near the primary wires or the feedback wires. Once the windings are completed, slide some heat shrink over the entire thing and then you can put some E6000 on the ends to keep the wires in position so they don't move around and then you can solder it directly to the board like I did here. These wires here I got out of a television. They're designed for very high voltage out of a cathode ray and they work just fine. Also be sure to use a nice heat sink because this will generate some heat on that transistor. Let's take a look at how well this works. Let me power it up. This is set. Now the current consumption can be varied by the brightness anywhere from around 400 milliamps to as high as 1.4 amps. Now the setting I have it on is around 7 or 800 milliamps. 
So let's take a look. Now once this warms up a little bit, like all the other fluorescent lights, it will get brighter and brighter. So this is just powered on. This is very bright. So it definitely works, and it works extremely well, and it's very simple to put together. You could probably put this entire circuit together using just a bunch of old scrap electronics you may have laying around. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you for watching.